Well, hello, family. It's your girl, Nicole Bevisman, your mindset transformational coach, founder and creator of Crystals, Diamonds, and Pearls. And I'm going to wait a few more moments and allow you guys to come on and be notified that I am on. I have a question to ask you. more moments. When you come into this space, will you just let me know that you're here? Will you say hello? Let me know that you're here. And then do me a favor. Will you share this video? Will you tag some friends? Because I'm going to talk about, I don't feel safe. Do you? It's a very serious question. As a transformational life coach, it is Dells or it hits um, in a space uh, within me that is very tender. And I wanted to come on and I wanted to share with you that if you're feeling like you're not safe, if you're feeling like your life is not protected, that your safety is no longer safe then you're feeling something very real. And it is really um, unfortunate that we find ourselves in this space. But I want to share with you and I want to talk about how we're grieving in this day and time. What's happening and why we're grieving and how we can grow in this grief. So if you're ready to learn or hear about that, if you're ready to hear my experience and my testimony, I want to share with you how I feel so unprotected right now. And what does that look like to me? And what does it look like to you? In our society today, with all that's been happening, another mass shooting, I think two more has occurred. And I'm in a space right now where I feel like my love, my love for country, my love for freedom, my love to live and exist, my safety, feeling like I can step outside and I'm safe to go someplace and I don't have to... Uh, be tensed up and stressed out, wondering if when if I walk into a building, will I walk out? And belonging, feeling like I belong to a group, to a society, to to a a a a way of living or a way of thinking. My love, my safety, my belonging. They don't feel secure. What about you? How do you feel? Do you feel like your safety is safe? We are finding ourselves in a space and time where our ability to love going out and exploring and becoming and having experiences, our love for interaction is being threatened. My safety, your safety, feeling protected, even in the outside world when we interact outside of our four doors, outside of those that we know, feeling protected to be able to have interaction one with another. Yes? Do, if you feel, it will, or if you've experienced any of that, if you feel like your love, your safety, your belonging is being threatened. Will you let me know in the comments below? Will you just say yes? Well, how does it look when you have your love and your safety and your belonging threatened? In today's society, honestly, for me personally, my love of, of wanting to go out and explore and have a good time and, and you know, have experiences outside of what I know to be my safe space. 
my love for community is threatened. My safety feels threatened. My belonging to a group or or organization or just belonging to this society, to this community, to this city, to this space that I live in, to this area that I'm I'm a part of. Uh, belonging to to my my work family, my work community. I feel it's threatened. And if you feel like your love or your safety or your belonging is threatened right now, please leave a comment. Let me know. Because what's happening is that we are now finding ourselves, whether you realize it or not, we're in this space of grieving. And it's not always in physical type of grief, a physical type of pulling away or separating. But this grieving that many of us are experiencing is emotional and it's mental. And it is a type of grief that is putting us on or allowing us to experience these roller coaster rides where we feel like we just don't have any balance in our lives. We feel so off balance or imbalanced in our emotional space in our mental space, right? And if you've ever experienced that, I'm ex a part of me has been experiencing this in my heart space when it comes to grieving what's been happening in our society. And the reason why I feel this way and I know that I'm experiencing this, and I think many of us may be in this space too, is because again, I feel like my love, my love of, of entertainment and, and uh, going out and celebration and my love of a party and, and a cornea one with another, my safety that when I go out, I know that I'm going to come back and I'm going to be okay and belonging, that I belong to a community, I belong to a, a, a space, a, a place that it, they're all threatened now. They're all being, there's no, no protection. There's no safety with it. And I am grieving all of that. And many of us are also grieving this. And it may not manifest itself in a natural type of way. But if you feel like what next? Because we're in such an unfamiliar environment. Our world is unfamiliar. Our society is unfamiliar. And what's happening is that we're starting to grieve this unfamiliar place. So how do we get out of this emotional place of grieving? And begin to grow in our grief. We will really allow ourselves to release these hindrances or that are in our minds. Or these mindsets that keep us hostage to this space or this place of, of uh, feeling intimidated. Feeling in, insecure. We're present but we're not secure. How do we feel secure again in our emotional space? How do we feel secure in our mental space? How do we feel connected to ourselves? Right? When so much chaos and sadness and frustration is going on in our world. Well, one thing we have to do, one thing I want to do is I want to, I want to talk to you about what is grief. So when I talk about this word grief, we attach it to death. And that is correct. But in our mindsets, we're thinking, we think that this grieving has to come with the death that creates this funeral. It's a loss of life. And that is one form of grief. But the one I'm talking about 
And what grief really is, is it's an emotional reaction to becoming disconnected from something or someone who provided power to your emotional experience. I'll repeat that. Grief. This is what grief is. This is why I talk about growing in our grief. Grief is an emotional reaction to becoming disconnected from something or someone who provided power to your emotional experience. Wow. That's a writer down. That's what grief is. So how do we grow in this grief? First of all, we have to identify what are those power sources? What is it that created this disconnect from whatever was causing or giving us these emotional experiences? And there were three main power sources that I, I share when I talk about growing in your grief. And these are power sources that I find myself, I found myself, and I still find myself connected to. But now for me today, I've learned how to, um, I didn't necessarily disconnect from these power grids, but I'm, I've learned how to manage the power that's coming out of it. And I'm going to show you how I learned how to transform the energy from it all so that I don't find myself in these roller coaster rides of craziness in my emotional space where I feel myself balanced. And I really do in my emotional and mental and physical body. But I had to do that when I learned how to grow in this grief. Now remember, it's an emotional reaction to being disconnected from something or someone that was the 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 um that was that powered that was the power of your emotional experience. So here is one power grid that will power your emotional experience, and that's death. Yeah, that's a huge one. And with all that's been happening, it's very tender right now. It's very sensitive. And I'm mindful of the atmosphere and the energy and the feel that's happening right now in our society and in our world as we deal with this huge power grid of death. That's putting many, as you can see, on emotional roller coaster rides. But it's not just death. And when I talk about that, it's not just death in the loss of life. We, we have lost so many. And I'm praying for all of my family in Texas. Um, for There was another mass shooting someplace else. And it's just, we have to begin to understand how to deal with our grief. And I want to show you how. Because, I, because so many are falling apart because they're holding on to the pain of the grief and then they don't know how to, to take the wisdom and release the pain. But they hold on to it and the grief becomes the security blanket. How many of you are familiar with Charlie Brown? One of my favorite cartoons and I'm dating myself. But remember Linus? And what did Linus carry with him all the time? That blanket. It became his security blanket. That thing that made him feel safe. And without it, he felt dysfunctional. And what happens is that we, we take our grief and our grief becomes our security blanket. Because it 
reminds us of what's familiar. And so we find ourselves plugged up into this power source of death. And again, it's not just the physical dying of individuals. But what about death of relationships? Death in mindsets and belief systems. Like having to really face the fact like, dang, I'm not feeling that no more. Like this thing I used to love to do, I used to love to feel this way. I used to love to have this experience. But now where I'm at in my life, I ain't feeling that. How do you let that go? And not feel a loss of life or a disconnect. Remember, that's what we say grief is. Is that disconnect from a power source, an emotional reaction. So when you find yourself in this space where death has come in your relationships, in friendships, death in your love. Feeling disconnected from your mate. Like you can't communicate with each other. You you can't vibe with each other no more. You don't, you're not feeling each other. There was a disconnect there. Right? And you're grieving this disconnect. Like what the heck? Right now for me, I'm grieving, feeling like I I how can I experience life and love? If I'm afraid to go outside. If I feel like my safety is not secure. So when we talk about this first power source, when we talk about growing in our grief, we have to begin to identify, are you plugged up into that death one? Death of attitude, death of belief system. Death of self. Here. Are you dying in your heart space? What about your vision? We are plugged up. When you can identify if you're plugged up in that power source, there is a way that you can grow in that grief. And what happens is that you'll begin to release the, the hindrances. You're Find yourself able to unplug from it. Allow yourself to power down because sometimes we just got to power down to let it go. Whew. Realizing that, that emotions are a good thing and having emotional experiences are beautiful. But when they're connected to a power source of death, it becomes very chaotic and dysfunctional and there's a disconnect and there's this grieving that takes place. And you feel like you lost your best friend, you've lost your 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 number one supporter. You you've lost feeling these feelings that you used to have and they're not there no more. And you're grieving this. There's a death to your love, your passion death to your purpose. So that's one power source. Another power source that we grieve in because there's a disconnect. Because we're, di we're disconnecting from, from whatever was providing that something or that someone that was providing that power to our emotional experiences. And in this power grid, we find ourselves grieving, disconnected of ourselves. And that's in midlife and menopause, this thing on transformational process that we have no control over. None whatsoever. We can't say when we're going to start it. We can't say when we're going to stop it. We can't tell it how we want to experience it. We can't even tell it if we want to experience it. 
We can't stop it. And yet, this power source affects us across every area of our life. When we step into this and connect up to being in menopause and in midlife, oh my God, okay, family, listen. Yeah. <laughs> Who that part. Can I just keep it 100 with you all? I was grieving deeply because I found myself being disconnected from me. I was disconnected from people around me. I wasn't, I, I, my emotionally, my, my, I was just like, I couldn't figure it out. I could not get it together. And it wasn't until I realized that I was connected into this power grid that I started having these aha moments like, oh, 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 okay. So when I walk into Bath and Body Works and I start gagging because the $200 worth of candles that I would normally buy, I can't even walk past that store now crying, thinking, but I love that stuff in there. Why can't I go into the essential fragrance area and get the sleep and, and, and the energy lotion again? What happened that one minute I'm able to, to enjoy the fragrance and the aroma of it, and the next I'm like gagging, walking past it? How did that take place? Who turned that power switch on? I didn't give him permission to do so. Did you? Then I find out my five senses are just so chaotic. It Okay, so now I have to fight doing this. Squinting to try to see. I'm fighting um, my taste changing. We can't cry because certain foods or drinks or flavors that I used to like, I, I, I didn't like anymore. It was just bothering me. And on the flip side, then I find myself becoming a coffee drinker. Whoop, skirt. <laughs> Come on. <sniffs> me. The one who couldn't even stand the smell of coffee, let alone drinking the stuff now. And so, see this emotional roller coaster ride of craziness that happens. Finding out, trying to figure out what, who am I? What is my image? What is my look? I remember going through this phase where I just was crying so much because I felt like, do I want to be in this glam, glam, glam girl like I'm used to doing, pageant girl, beauty queen? All of that, the bling, bling, bling. And I and I remember one time after winning Miss Elite Global International, um, I remember getting dressed one day and I was going to an appearance and I got all blinged up and like cute like I did. And I felt so just not myself. I just didn't like it. It it didn't sit well with me. And it was like, oof, I don't, I don't feel, I didn't feel comfortable. And it wasn't an uncomfortability where, you know, you, your clothes are too tight and you just sit down. It wasn't that. This uncomfortability was in my emotional space. It was in my, in my soul. So I knew something was happening. So when you find yourself connected to this power grid of menopause, Lord Jesus, it's, uh, <laughs> let's just keep it real. It's not easy going through this thing. Nobody gave us a manual for this. We got a ton of books that talked about how to deal with, you know, coming into womanhood and manhood and you know, the squeaky voice and the hormonal changes and the all that happens physically 
when we're younger, it happens again now. So how do we grieve in this space and still keep our balance emotionally and mentally? Keep ourselves feeling connected to ourselves. Again, remember, we're in an unfamiliar environment. Our love, our safety, and our belonging have been threatened, ladies and gentlemen. Family, I don't feel safe. My love doesn't feel safe. My love for country. My love to go out and experience new things. My desire to want to, to have relationship outside of the four walls. To go out in the community and experience newness. My safety. Knowing that I can walk out my door and feel safe in this environment and in this society, in my neighborhood, in my community. Belonging. I feel like I belong to, to something that is greater than myself. All three of those big areas in our lives are threatened. So now we are grieving that as well. So how do we find that balance? So here's, I said there was three power sources. So I talked about the first power grid of death that puts us on an emotional roller coaster ride because we're dealing with relationships and mindsets and thought processes and uh, needing to feel needed in death. The relationship uh, when you feel like your relationships are are changing or dying or you know you feel like you you don't have that connectivity no more that that oneness no more or when you find yourself plugged up to the, the, the power grid of being in menopause and midlife you know God that in of itself is enough to make you feel like you want to you're suffocating. But then there's a third power grid that I found myself recently being connected to. And then again, I didn't ask for this. It's been an empty nester. So now I stand in this mama power, parental power overload. And I'm going to become an empty nester. And I'm looking around wondering... Who's going to need me now? Mm. <laughs> Where will my mama power go? How can I distribute my mama power and still have that, uh, that power and that authority? Because you know, when we're in, even when we're in midlife and we're coming up and we're parents, we stand in a parental power that is, you know, a little swaggerish a little bit. Mm. <laughs> but now, when you become an empty nester, you don't have that same power. You don't have the same weightiness. And your need to be needed now has to be adjusted. So here you are in this power grid. And you're trying to understand where does this overload of power, parental power, where does it go? How do I use it as a tool and as a resource? How can I outsource it so that, so that others can experience a safe space where they too can grow and, and mature and and have beautiful experiences. We're grieving these spaces because we feel disconnected in all three. It brings this experience of disconnection in our relationships, in our, our mindsets, in our emotions. 
I felt the most disconnected to myself between 2018, 2019, and 2020. Those three years were the worst for I just could not function. I couldn't get it together. I just fumbled through. I I remember having moments where I just literally just broke down because I just, I didn't feel safe. I didn't know what was happening. And I had to realize that I was going through this transformation. I was, I was grieving losing what I thought I needed in order to uh, allow my vision to grow, in order to allow my purpose to grow, in order to allow myself to grow. And I found out that those power grids were putting me on and having me experience roller coaster rides of madness that I was just wow. Full blown in the seat, seat belt fastened, safety bar down, and I'm sitting there screaming the entire time with a whole bunch of people with me. My children, my friends, a few of my co workers. I didn't know. But when I began to grow in my grief, I began to uncover like, whoa, okay, first of all, yeah, plant up to that one. You got to be nice. That's what that looks like. That's what I sound like. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Then when I realized I was in menopause, well, that just took a whole nother turn. Because then I began to give myself permission to grow. Because then I understood that, okay, I don't want to fight these changes. I want to become curious about them. So, okay, I don't like bath and body. Well, what does work for me? I'm not a perfume girl no more. I wear body oils. So I create my own roller, uh, roller balls and body sprays. I organically create my own. And I love them. It works well for me. It settles my in my body. It, it settles with my skin. And I'm finding there's new products that I need. My, my desire for my look has changed. <laughs> I realize that I have become them. I'm the them generation. You know... Remember when we were little and we would look up to our older cousins and aunts and uncles, specifically in particular, our grandparents. It's like, oh, look at them over there. Mm -hmm. Oh, them and they. Welcome, guys. We're now them. And I want to embrace that. But I'm looking at the world that we're in right now. And it's so unfamiliar. The environment is unfamiliar. Our society is unfamiliar. It's nothing like it used to be. So now what does it look like to you? How do you grow in this grief? When we begin to identify our power sources, that's going to be the first thing that we do. We have to realize that we are plugged up. And it's okay to acknowledge that that's where you are. When you learn how to grow in your grief, that's the thing that you'll learn to do is to be honest with yourself. And I'll show you and I'm going to really break down and identify each one of those power grids. Death, what it looked like in my life, how it how it manifested, how it affected my relationships, and oh gosh, wait till you hear that one. And what did I do to transform the hurt 
the pain, the fear of being plugged up to that, that power source of death. And I'm going to share with you how to deal with menopause and how I embraced the change once I realized what it was. <laughs> so first we acknowledge where you are in that process. Because see, with menopause, it began to deal with internal beliefs about me. And you'll, you'll learn how, you'll uncover experience, um, clearing the clutter out of your space, in your emotions, in your mental space. Identify where you are in your grieving process and your triggers. It's going to be so important. And I'm going to share with you how I discovered I was in menopause. What I was going through at the time and how it affected my relationships. How it affected how I saw myself and I thought about myself. Then I'm going to show you and talk to you about um, being connected to the power and grid of being an empty nester. And man, all day, this past Mother's Day really opened my eyes to what it's like being an empty nester. And that feeling of not being needed no more and feeling disconnected from my family because they're all grown up and they're making traditions of their own. And I was grieving, feeling disconnected from them. But I found how to turn that grief and realize I'm really not grieving. I'm transforming again. And so in this space of being an empty nester, I'm walking in with a whole lot of curiosity like, yo, okay, I don't have this over here anymore that's needing my attention. So I can let that go and then focus on this over here. And how do we do that? That's releasing that parental power overload. How you can... You can let that go and power down from that parental power overload and find your space where you can step into your own uh, superpower. Realizing your vision, your purpose, your passion. Honey, I am having a ball today in spite of what's happening in our society. It's so sad. But I want to encourage you all that you really and absolutely can grow in your grief. Because remember, grief is an emotional reaction to becoming disconnected from something or someone who provided power to your emotional experience. Are you ready to grow in that grief? I learned how to do it. It took me five years to learn how to do this. And I am so excited to introduce to you guys this five-week journey. Where I take my five-year experience and I can distance down to five weeks. And I'm going to show you how you can begin to grow in your grief. Especially today. I don't want my love, safety, and belonging not to feel insecure. I don't want it to feel threatened. And I don't want yours to feel threatened either. So if you're ready to grow in your grief, if you're ready to experience that stability in your peace, balance in your emotional and mental space, and truly feeling connected to yourself, I want you to do me a huge favor. Why don't you become a part of my email community and family? Why is that important? Because I am getting ready to launch this amazing opportunity that my email community is going to be the first to have access to. And that is growing in your grief. Pre-launch open registration is going to start on Saturday. 
I'm going to send it out to my email list first. And I want you all to have exclusive access. So subscribe to my email list. I'm going to leave the link in the comments below. And I want you to get ready to grow in your grief. We're going to do this together. I'm going to show you how I did it. I'm going to hold the space so that you can. Because the truth of the matter is we're all grieving something. A lot of times we don't want to admit that we are. And a lot of times we brush it up underneath the rug and think, I don't have time to deal with that. But you know what? We have to deal with it. If not, we're going to go into an implosion in our emotional space and in our mental space that is just not going to be healthy. And I don't want you to have that experience. So are you ready to go in your grief with me? I know you are and I cannot wait. I see you guys on here. Thank you so much for connecting with me. Thank you for hanging with me. Thank you for hearing. And I am so ready to show you how to do this. So make sure you subscribe to my email list and become part of the email community and get ready to receive exclusive access to an amazing five-week journey called Grow In Your Grief. And we are going to delve into identifying those power sources. Specifically, in each week, you, I'm going to take one of those power grids. And we're going to talk about it. I'm going to share my experience. And the beautiful thing about growing in your grief, guys, is that you're going to have live sessions with me. Yep. All five weeks. Mm -hmm. Now that is powerful. We are all going to come together. I only have 15 seats open. Just 15. Because it's going to be so intimate and so personal. And I'm really going to share my, my tears, my pains, and my victories. So that you can begin to experience the, the joy of feeling aligned and connected to yourself. And balanced in your emotional and mental space. So I am so excited to introduce this program to you. I am so excited to, to uh, invite you to be a part of this email community. But more importantly, I am so humbled and grateful that I'm able to come on here and really share with you what it's like to go in your grief. And to let you know that if you are feeling unsafe, you're not alone. Because as the title of this message says, I don't feel safe. Do you? But I'm going to show you how you can. So get ready to become part of that email community, guys. I want to thank you so much for hanging with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Elaine, Melvin, Aaron, I see you guys. Um, Freda, my new son, Nate. Uh, Jiggy Marketing, hey, what's up? Thank you so much for hanging with me. Will you please do me a favor? Will you please share this video? Will you let them know that there is a way that we can grow in our grief, even though we're in an unfamiliar uh, time, an unfamiliar environment. We're standing in an unfamiliar world, an unfamiliar society. We don't know what's going to happen next. And our love, safety, and belonging are absolutely threatened. They're, they're being threatened right now. But we, my email community, you guys, we're going to grow in our grief and we are going to learn how to release the hindrances of our mind so that we can follow our bliss and live our joy. Are you ready for that? I'm so excited. I cannot wait to get started. Listen, like I said, the registration is going to um, open up on Saturday. It's going to be an exclusive invitation only to my email community. So please make sure you become a part of that. I'm going to make absolutely make sure I leave that link in the comments below. And if you're on my Instagram page, please go to my bio. The link is there. I thank you again, guys. Have a beautiful Thursday. Have an amazing weekend. Go out and enjoy yourself. Know that I love you. You guys are crystals, diamonds, and pearls. You are precious. You are priceless. You are valuable. And you're so loved. Have a beautiful rest of your night. Thanks, guys.
Bye. And make sure you sign up for the email list. Talk to you soon. Bye, guys.